Well, the last time I was here on this stage was 12 years ago when um, I was a munchkin. I don't know how many of you know what a munchkin is. Anybody? So a munchkin is something like this, and uh, I took part in the ACS musical of 2002. And there was a sort of a staircase here, and uh, I had to stay for three minutes like this. <laughs> um, so now, 13 years later, I'm back on this stage, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about what has happened to me and what I've done in those uh, 13 years. So after ACS, um, I was... I was granted a full scholarship and I went to study in Washington State. Um, having studied here at ACS, I had some international friends and I thought I'm quite prepared for studying abroad. But <laughs> what awaited me at Whitman College was actually on a whole new level. It was really a new experience. And uh, when I went for the orientation camp, uh, I, we spent 10 days together with the other international students. Well, this was the first time I met a person from Mongolia, a person from Nepal, a person from uh, Burma, Swaziland. Hmm. And um, we, had, we had enough time to actually discover that we're so different. And through discovering how different we are and from what different cultures we come, we actually laid the basis for lifelong friendships. And I can say that these are my closest people now. And um, it was a great chance to actually get to celebrate and to, to, to experience so many traditions coming from their countries. For example, here, celebrating the Indian spring holiday, Holi, and um, one day, I remember, we had to make a potluck with uh, different dishes from each country, and I made a tarator. And for the people who know me, actually, I'm a tarator snob, you know. I, I like it to be uh, the perfect taste with all the ingredients and so on. So um, I made it, I served it to everyone, and then the, the, boy, uh, the boy from Birma, Nanda, he puts the tarator on rice, on white rice. And I was really devastated by seeing this picture because, I mean, it was impossible for me to think something like this. And then he was trying to convince me how amazing the taste is, and I tried it and I liked it. <laughs> and, um, well, this is what happens when, when you interact, when you mix different cultures, you find new dishes, you find new tastes, you create together. So, at Whitman, I studied uh, a double major, uh, politics and film studies. Politics, because my parents wanted me to study something serious, and film studies because it was my life passion to become a filmmaker. Maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. Well, in my case, it did work out somehow. I mean, because of my studies, I had the chance to to live and work and study abroad uh, for s in the span of six years, I actually lived in six different countries. And um, this is a dance we did in, in my college, in Whitman College. And um, it was a celebration of a Bulgarian holiday, 3rd of March. And then this is me in Buenos Aires. Uh, meeting some policemen that m were meeting a Bulgarian for the first time and they were super excited to take a photo with uh, a person from the country of Christo Stoikov. <laughs> so, uh, this is me with uh, Nanda and Celani, Birma and Swaziland. Um, so, in my senior year at Whitman College, I signed for a course that was called Community-Based Research. And uh, we had to volunteer for a local NGO in Washington State and try to research topics of ethnic and racial inequalities for the Latino immigrant community. Well, you know, we, we went out in the fields, we went out in the farms, we went to the homes of these illegal immigrants. We met with them, we did interviews, and it didn't take us long to realize that actually we start believing in a cause. We start believing that we can make an impact. And it was my first experience that really showed me that I want to do something like this for the rest of my life. And it did 
really uh, affect me to choose what I want to f study further, and that's how I ended up doing a master's degree in immigration and current democracies after that in Barcelona. So, I guess until now I've been talking about the, the beauty of diversity. Uh, diversity is uh, a creation generating power. It's, um, it's inspirational. And uh, then we have the other face of diversity. We have the other face actually of immigration. And I wonder how many of you heard about what happened just a couple of days ago in the Mediterranean Sea? And how many of you realize what a huge tragedy this is? Because 900 people have drowned. 900 people have died and there is no way we can know their identity. We don't, they didn't have passports. There is no way we can, their families can be informed. There is no way that the families of these people will know that their daughters, sons, wives, husbands have died on the way to pursue a better future in Europe. So, we all know that there are ongoing conflicts in Africa and the Middle East. And um, it is not a surprise that many people would like to find peace here in Europe because it's just a pitch away from these conflict zones. And uh, Bulgaria, for example, in the last four years has really been... I'll just illustrate to you that um, in 2011, there were about 1,000 applications of refugees coming to Bulgaria. Well, last year, in 2014, there were more than 11,000. So the numbers jumped for just four years. This is, you can see the curve. Um, well, if there is one thing I want you to take from my talk today, is actually to to get curious, to get curious and courageous, to be, to be ready to go out there, to go out and meet different people, no matter whether it's for fun, to help them, or to, to do a class assignment, because you never know <laughs> if a class assignment might turn into your, actually, life goals. Um, so now, can you all close your eyes? And I'll tell you when to open them. Imagine that tomorrow you wake up early in the morning and nothing is the same. You see the streets are blocked from military patrols. Your parents tell you that there is no school today because, um, because the school is closed and they tell you to pack and uh, to take just a backpack and then you decide to put your laptop, you put your laptop and realize you can't take too much stuff. And then you leave with a car, you travel some hours, maybe a day or two with a the car, then you go and change into a bus, and then after the bus you travel for some more in a truck, then you stop near some kind of a border of Bulgaria, you hear, the name Bulgaria, and then you have to to go at night during the forest and then somebody tells you that you have to take off um, some of, like, you have to leave your stuff, you have to leave your passport, you have to leave your backpack with the laptop, so too bad you took it. And then you cross the forest and you have to go through a river and then you finally end up in a place like this, open your eyes and thank you for really being patient. And then this is your room for the next night. It's the room for you and your family. You're super tired, so you're happy, maybe, relieved, you've made it. And then you stay there for a couple of weeks, maybe. But can you imagine if you have to stay in a place like this for two years? Well, this is what happens to many of the refugees that come to Bulgaria. Their families, just like I told you, with kids who go to school and um, they have come here to Bulgaria to find peace for the time of the conflict in their countries. The conditions here are not very good. I, last year I worked on a project with 
third country nationals and immigrant communities, and we did go to some of the refugee camps. The conditions are not good. Well, there are so many kids there. There are so many people from different cultures behind the walls of these refugee camps. Just in Sofia, there are three. In Ovchukupel, in Vuanna Rampa, in Vrajdebna. And I dare you to go there and actually, just before the talk, and I, I, Sarah told me that this last fall, there was a campaign here in, in, at ACS, and uh, you guys, you raised money for the refugees, November No Shave. And this is what I'm talking about. It's to find some, something you want to do and make an impact, and now I dare you to to go on and do it again and do it bigger and do it maybe two times and maybe next time when you do it you go and you make it for a special holiday of some of the communities and you celebrate maybe the Iranian New Year, maybe another holiday. And a little advice from me is that it's always easiest to approach the kids because you can just go play basketball with them, you can go tell them, teach them a couple of words in Bulgarian teach them or discover that actually in Bulgarian and in Arabic there are the same words for tenjera, <laughs> um, balkan, churap, all coming from Turkish because of the Ottoman Empire. And then don't be scared to actually learn new stories because you never know how much you will actually be changed after you put yourself in the shoes of other people and how inspirational and powerful it is. Well, you know, things happen like this and this is actually not my final presentation, so there is something that I really wanted to show you and I'm still gonna tell to you and talk to you about it. Uh, I'm gonna tell you my personal success story with an encounter I had last year through my job. And uh, I want to share it with you, especially because it's the International Book Day. So I want to tell you the story of Hayri Hamdan, who is a writer, a poet, and a translator. He comes from Palestine. He, he grew up in the, fam in the family of refugees in Jordan. Then he came to study here in Bulgaria. After that, he went to study some more in Belgium, and then he came back and settled here because he says, this is where I feel, I, I feel at home. Well, he told me once that once he started dreaming in Bulgarian, he was ready to start writing in Bulgarian. He started writing poetry in Bulgarian, and let me tell you, as somebody who writes, that his poetry is so rich because you have Arab imagery and you have such consideration of the language and the words, and it's really en enriching. And um, there is a project that starts in a couple of weeks, and it's gonna be, I'm telling you a little secret here, of another ACS alumni, but it's a project of uh, contemporary poetry that's gonna be published in the trains of the Sofia subway, and Hayri is gonna be one of the poets there. So. I will end up by trying to tell you the, one of his poems, but you know it's very difficult to tell a poem if you don't know it by heart, so maybe I will even add a little bit to it from my personal um, poetry inspiration. So it goes like this. Um, Finally, Sophia started living inside me. And what about the sea? Where is the sea? The sea is 500 cuddles away from here. Thank you. <laughs>